Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis. Hello there, this is Ras Dennis, and I welcome you once again to another episode of Reggae Just Extra. Yes, sir. Today's episode is in memory of Puma Jones, an American and a former member of the reggae group Black Uhuru. Having graduated with a master's degree from Columbia University in New York City, she chose reggae over a white collar job. She was an amazing soul and very talented. If this is your first time of watching our channel, kindly click on the subscribe button, like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Jones certainly has an amazing story. Sandra Puma Jones graduated from Columbia University with a master's degree prior becoming a social worker in New York City. She studied dance with the Chuck Davis troupe where she took particular interest in African dance. As an American-born female vocalist in the 1984-85 Grammy Award-winning trio Black Uhuru, she was one of the first women to break into reggae's big time. Puma proudly acknowledges her position as a forerunner in the recent surge of female recording artists filling international charts today. Born in Columbia, South Carolina, on October 5, 1953, Puma migrated to New York in the 60s, where she grew up listening to Aretha Franklin and Dionne Warwick. This early exposure to popular music soon had the young Puma desirous to be a singer. Actually, I wanted to be a Calypso singer when I was very young in age, confesses Puma. She later did sing, performing solo and with groups as a teen. When asked how she felt about the breakup of Black Uhuru and the loss of singer Michael Rose, disappointed, she replied, there was an objective that has not yet been fulfilled. She hails the young Junior Reed as a more than ample replacement, so we can continue on our works. Her feelings on the Grammy Award that Black Uhuru received is summed up in one word rewarded. This great train robbery album also features City Vibes, written by Puma and her first successful attempt at lead vocals. Puma confidently states, it's only the beginning. We talked a while about the productivity of women in reggae. It's a necessary move, because the balance has to be there. The woman's struggle is an important struggle to address, Puma continued. The strength we need to guide our children, support our man, hood, is vital. I heartily agree to the point that we must all share to become a very strong chain. The advice to aspiring young artists is to achieve a clear focus in order to enter music on this level. You must be a well-rounded person and see if it is what is really right for you. She adds positively, if your talent, motivation and your initiative is really correct, then you will be there. In the mid-70s, Puma decides to move to Jamaica in search of a definitive change in her life. Jones briefly sang with Miriam Makiba, then using the name Mama Africa, and sang with the band Sons of Negus led by Ras Michael. In 1978, she was introduced by a mutual friend to Derek Ducky Simpson, the leader of reggae group Black Uhuru. That group was undergoing a significant lineup change that also included the addition of singer Michael Rose. Jones became a full member of Black Uhuru and sang on seven studio albums, starting with Showcase in 1979 and also including the critically acclaimed Red in 1981 and the Grammy Award winning Anthem in 1983. That album won the award for Best Reggae Album in 1985, the first year of that award's existence. Jones was noted for adding lyrics on religious and social topics to Black Uhuru songs, during a period when reggae musicians were often accused of being trite and dismissive of women, and she was also known for her haunting voice. Her last full album with the group was Brutal in 1986, which was nominated for another Grammy Award and reached the charts in New Zealand and the Netherlands. Before sessions began for the album Positive in 1987, Jones was diagnosed with breast cancer. She had to withdraw from Black Uhuru and was replaced by singer Olaf Unke. Jones returned to the United States for treatment and died at age 36 on January 28, 1990. She was buried near her family home in South Carolina. Thanks for watching and kindly leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and I'll see you again very soon for another video. However, until we meet again, please subscribe, 
like and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me, Ras Dennis, and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis. <laughs>